Let's go. You know what to do. We're going to fire the recruiting cannons. This was a big win for Greg Gard and the Wisconsin Badgers basketball team. Let's talk about it on Wisconsin on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? It's a pop-up episode of Lockdown Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. We do these when big news pops, you know, when the C.J. Williams and the Nick Evers and the Braden Locks and the A.J. Stores commit. That's where we do it because I think it's important. Uh, this is a big one. You know, this if we talked about the biggest needs and gosh almighty, have we ever talked about the biggest needs for the Wisconsin Badgers basketball team? We talked athlete, right? We talked length we talked rangy athlete we talked a guy who can create his own shot that has some athletic pedigree check 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 with aj store so let's sound those cannons because this is a big one fire the recruiting cannons another one is headed to madison on wisconsin let's go so let's let's really quickly let's talk aj store um who he is what he brings Former top 100 uh, recruit, right? Uh, so an elite high school prep prospect. Was a freshman last year at St. John's. Played at St. John's. Started 17 games as a freshman. Averaged 8.8 .8 per game. 40% uh, from the three-point line on decent volume. 75% from the free throw line. So really good shooting metrics, both from the, the free throw line and from three-point. Uh, if you watch film on him, really good catch and, and release shooter. You don't see a lot of movement shots, at least – so actually, let me let me back up a second. I need to dive way deeper in on AJ Store. I, I've only looked at film superficially. I, I looked at it when I, I knew he was kind of visiting, and I've looked at it a little bit more since he committed. I'm going to do a much deeper dive on Store, but from what I've seen, very very good borderline elite standstill shooter. When the ball gets swung to him, he's banging those. I didn't see a ton of movement shots. You know where he's taking a couple dribbles, uh, setting somebody up, stepping back, or coming off a curl into a shot. But I want to, before I make any any assumptions there, I want to watch more film on him. But really good shooter, 6'6", with a 6'8"-ish wingspan. Um, that's big time. Good hops, athletic. Dude, check so many boxes. Let's get into some comments because I have a much I want to say, but I want to, I want to get your thoughts on this because this is when we do shows like this, it's really about the community. That's why we do it. It's not so I can come on here and ramble. Um, it's so we can get together and talk about something that we're all passionate about and grow together. So let's get it. Christopher Gerber, this kid looks legit. 6'6 six, six wing that's athletic and can shoot. Got to give guard and the staff a lot of credit. Yeah, you got to start there with your last point. You got to give guard. Listen, I've said it a lot. Whether you're on the side of I'm really confident in guard or not, this offseason would be incredibly telling, right? And if you've been one of those people who have been incredibly critical of Greg Guard, you have to give him credit in this moment. Otherwise, you're not being fair, right? And I, I've been a guy that's been more on the fence of uh, guard is is done well. I don't want him on the hot seat yet. But if he had struck out this offseason, I, I've I've talked about it. I would be critical. So if you've been critical, of great guard, you have to give him his props here. You have to. This is a this is a home run addition. This is about as good as you were going to get in the portal at Wisconsin. This is yes, he knocked this out of the park. And by the way, Noah Reynolds is no slouch either. He's brought in two players, uh, one, a guy coming off the bench. We talked about that. We said Noel Reynolds can't be the star of this offseason, but he's a good piece. This can be the star, right? So I'm excited about it. RFL X Drip says, great get. This is what we need. Agreed. Thank you for jumping in. Keith Jank, he says, I'm much more excited about store than Reynolds, former top 100 recruit, 40% from three. Uh, great get. Yeah, I agree. You know, when, when Reynolds committed, I said, He's like a single, like it, it's like a, a slap hitter. He hit a single. It's, a, it's good. This is like a home run, right? And that, but singles are good too. And, and you pair the two of them. That's a great thing. You don't have to choose store Reynolds. Everybody's more excited about store. I agree, Keith. Uh, but Reynolds is going to give you nice scoring off the de off, off the bench. He's going to give you depth. Uh, another ball handler when maybe games get a little tight. Insurance against Chucky Hepburn. So don't sleep on Reynolds. Like he's going to bring some, some nice things. But yeah, 100% agree store is a star recruit like he's he's a big time pedigree kid who brings things to this roster that we have desperately needed andrew p is store already the best player on the roster that is a excellent question andrew i love that question um i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say no but he's at he almost certainly has the highest upside 
right on the roster right now. But listen, he, he scored 8.8 per game last year. Um, as a freshman, he's young. You know, Connor had put up better numbers than that as a freshman in, in the Big Ten, right? So let, let's pump the brakes there a little bit. I don't think he's the best player on the team, but he's probably the best combination of upside length. That's athleticism and shooting. Um, he, he fits a major, major hole on this team. John Smith says, Smitty53 here. What's up, John? Welcome home, AJ. Indeed. Welcome home. Justin Sarbacher just says, let's effing go with multiple Gs and all caps. This is, listen, I'm right there with you, Justin. Thank you for jumping in. This is one of the commitments. When you're making a comment on it, you hit that caps lock, and there was no lower cases in this commitment. I love it. David Zinn says, a good beginning by guard. Need to continue with the 2024 class. Agreed. Like, again, this, this still shouldn't be it. There's still a need for a backup five on this roster. Now, maybe that's Gus. That's, that's very possibly Gus slash Winter. Maybe Hodges has a gear in there that we haven't seen that, that guard can unlock. Um, but it is it is possible that, that those backup five minutes next year are going to be filled by the incoming combo of, of Gus Yaldin and Winter. Gus not the tallest dude, but Gus is, Gus is smart, intelligent. He's not going to get pushed around. He's going to be able to box people out. He might be more ready to play those backup five minutes and people are giving him credit for. I'm interested in that one. I know he can pick and pop, uh, space the floor. I wouldn't write that off. That might be the backup five right there. Ryan, 23791, an athletic lengthy guard. What a concept. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Look at look at UConn last year. By the way, I didn't even mean to do this. By the way, Store AJ Store scored like 20 points on UConn last year. That, that was an incredible defense, and he had one of his better games of the year against the defending national champions. Put that in your memory banks. That's an incredible piece of, of, of um, a data point there. But when you look at UConn, everybody on that roster is long and bouncy and athletic, and it's nice to have a chess piece in our back pocket now that also has those type of attributes. Long, athletic, bouncy guard. This, team, this roster desperately needed it more than anything. Just an uptick on perimeter athleticism and not just for the ability to get to the cup, to, to create contact, to shoot free throws. You need somebody who can guard the other team's 6'6 six, six wing a little more efficiently. You need somebody who can fly in and get an offensive rebound just because they can now jump somebody. Those are the things that potentially Store can give you. Now, again, I'm going to do a deep dive on Store. I want to really look at the stats, get into synergy, see kind of where he's scoring, where he's efficient. Um, uh, so that show is going to come. This is more of just a reaction. But I, I, on the surface, man, he checks a lot of boxes. Justin Sarberker says the fickle effect. Of course, why not? <laughs> right? Everything, everything is is going coming up roses for Wisconsin since Luke Fickle got here. I love it. Isaac Prem finally an athletic wing that can shoot. Agree. We've agreed. Shell, what's up, my friend? He's on a lot of stuff. So it just says let's go, Mr. Volk. Uh, didn't think we had a chance of getting this guy with all with all the great uh, basketball teams out there. I think is what he's trying to say. I, I missed the end of that comment, but this is. That's a great point. Like this is a major, it's not just a major addition that fills a major need. It's a major recruiting win because the the schools that reached out to store, it's a who's who of basketball, right? He, he could have gone to Illinois, Xavier, Texas, Auburn, um, several others. Like that's just a, a snapshot of it. So it's a huge win. Ryan, two, three, seven, nine, one, take a seat, Carter. Yeah, listen, we all love Carter from the effort, the in-state, but he can't be your, your first guy coming off the bench if you're a big-time program. I, I, I hate to say that the last thing I ever want to do is take shots, but just from a basketball standpoint, he doesn't bring enough offensively. And we talked about that ad nauseum. Neil Bide? Um, that's probably Bird, and it's probably misspelled. Neil Bird says, how do we get to the correct scholarship limit with these new transfers and the, the class coming in, right? You have that three-man class coming in. I think what you're going to see um, is – some of the walk-ons take kind of an NIL route. The walk-ons that have been given scholarships be compensated through the NIL route and they give up their scholarships. I also don't think it's impossible. We don't see still a, another transfer from Wisconsin. That could be an, an Ilver. It could be, you know, maybe a Hodges as they see some of these other pieces come in. Maybe they want a better shot. So I don't think it's that door is completely shut yet either. By the way, I see your, your uh, avatar there train like a Laker. Is that Turtle Lake? Um, yeah, Turtle Lake. I used to ride my bike to Turtle Lake from Cumberland. That's that was a, a decent ride. I was a younger person at that time, but yeah, let me know if that's a Turtle Lake there. Um, let's keep going here. Jan Volks has great teams that were after him. Yep, agreed. Easton Park says, "Let's go, great get." It is a great get. All right, we got to take a quick pause. We're gonna come back. We have more comments, and then I want to talk about the lineup. Who who doesn't start? How does this lineup look? Because 
AJ Store is not coming here to not be a starter. And all five starters are coming back. Plus, we added a, a, um, a decent rotational guard in Noah Reynolds. What does the starting lineup look like? We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. I think it's fascinating. But first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bill Bar. Again, I've talked about Bill Bar. It is just the, the best way to get healthy, eat some, some good quality protein, and not make it taste like cardboard. Right, Bill Bar, I don't know how they've done it, but it's a delicious snack without the sugar and calories, 100% real chocolate. you got to try this. And if you're like me, uh, you, you just kind of eat on the go sometimes. You want something in the back pocket. You want something in the, in the backpack on the way to the gym, on a hike. Bill Bar is perfect for that. They're amazing. They taste healthy. Again, I don't know how they do it. They, they It's one of the great mysteries of life, how they've created a protein bar, 100% real chocolate, not a lot of calories, and it tastes delicious. Flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream. I absolutely love it. And now you don't need to wait to go get a box. Go to Sam's Club, get your uh, variety pack. Go to Walmart, the pharmacy section, get your four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate bar, coconut puff. Um, you're going to thank me later. Bill Bar, the greatest protein bar on the planet. All right, I want to say thank you again to the everydayers, the people that tune into the show every day who are here on the grind, talking badges with us, chatting it up. If you were here with us yesterday, listen, you, we talked about um, big time recruiting commits. We talked about the quarterback battle. If you're going to be here with us tomorrow, you're going to hear John Garcia Jr. break down the linebackers. Again, the everydayers that do this with us every day. I love y'all. Let's go, fam. Let's keep talking. Okay. Um, Nathan Hammond says just kaboom. That's it. I mean, the title of my show was boom, right? So I'm right there with you, Nathan. Thanks for jumping in. Mike says, great get Bo Dragon with a comment. I averaged eight points on a, eight points per game on a team that went seven and three. Don't get your championship rings made yet. Bo, how does it feel to maybe get some cracks in your Bo or your Gray Guard hate? Like, this is a big get for Greg Guard. You have to at least give him props there. And by the way, I thought this was interesting. And, and Bo, thank you for tuning in as always, man. I love your stuff. Um, I thought it's interesting. So he averaged 8.8 .8 points per game, I believe. Uh, so you, you got to round up there, Bo. But down the stretch, he averaged 12 and a half, right? So his best basketball, and remember, he was a freshman last year. St. John's is a real program. That's not, that's a much better level of competition than Wyoming. He played UConn twice. He played Xavier. He played Creighton. Creighton. Like he played a really good schedule. And down the stretch, he started stringing 20 point, 15 point games. He scored 20 on UConn. So, yeah, like I don't think, as I said, he's coming in as the best player on the roster, but he's averaging 8.8 .8 per game as a true freshman on a good roster and then 12 and a half per game down the stretch. I'm pretty I'm, I'm happy. Uh, fire the can and Jay Daly. We are absolutely did. Jake Mayer, absolutely massive get. He's an immediate starter. I think Klesman would be a fantastic guy to move to the second unit. Yeah, let's go there. I think he has to be right. Like we've talked about. Let's, let's just let's just chop it up. Who's. Chucky Hepburn is not moving off the starting unit. He's been a starter for two years. And if we said, hey, Chucky, do you mind coming off the bench? He would. There's, there's a lot of programs that would come in with enough money and a starting spot. Like Hepburn's not going anywhere, nor should he, by the way. Um, Tyler Wall coming back as, as a fifth-year guy. He's started for a couple years. Uh, he also provides incredible defensive versatility. He's not going anywhere. We know Stephen Crowell started, right? There's not another five on the roster. And, and he got better last year. He showed flashes. Uh, and then Connor, you're not moving Connor to the bench in any scenario. Like he's a future star. And he came in off the bench this year, earned a starting spot. You're not going to then take that starting spot back away. So that just leaves Klesman. That's it. Klesman's already transferred once. And I don't want to say that you use that as leverage, but we all know it's a little harder to transfer a second time, right? You have to go through a process. You might have to sit out a year. So Wisconsin does kind of have that leverage against Klesman. And he's an in-state kid. And you can very easily sell him on like the Ginobili role where, where, where it's like, listen, you're going to come off the bench, but you're basically going to play starter minutes. You're going to play some at the one, some at the two, some at the three. Um, you're, if anybody gets hurt, you're going to be that guy. You're going to get 25 minutes a game. And you can kind of be the lead scorer on that second unit. So I think Klesman is absolutely the guy moved to the bench. Um, and what a, what a six man, right? You think about what you want from a six man. You want a guy who can come in, um, score, shoot, play defense. Um, he's going to, and, and someone who doesn't have an ego that's going to destroy the team uh, because he can't stand coming off the bench. Everything we've heard from Klesman is he's not that dude. He's a great locker room guy. I think he's a leader. Uh, so I think it's a great fit. You have Klesman at the, uh, as the six man. Uh, Noah Reynolds might be your seven. Gus might be your eight. Uh, like that, that's a pretty legitimate AD. And then you, behind him, you have Kamara McGee, you have Gilmore, you have Ilver, 
You have uh, Nolan Winter, John Blackwell. You've really started to see how this is going to, to fit together now. Um, the depth is much, much, much better already. So I'm excited for that. But yeah, I agree, Jake. I think Klesman is the guy to move to the second unit. Christopher Gerber says, is it too harsh to say that if you aren't able to beat out Carter Gilmore for minutes, your scholarship should be up for review, freshman excluded? No, listen, I I hear I hear what you're saying. I'm going to get off the Gilmore stuff for a little bit. I'm not saying you're you're wrong in, in your point there. Like we have to get better play from Gilmore. Um, and I think those minutes are going to be much harder for Gilmore to get to. Now he's, let's say he shoots it better. If Gar, if Gilmore can find the shot, he's going to be in the rotation as well because of what he does defensively, because listen, not everybody works as hard as he does. And coaches will tell you hustle is a skill. It really is. So if he can shoot better, he might find a role, but that role is not, is no longer going to be, the role it was last year, right? It's going to be a, a more minimal role, which I think is better for the team because offensively we just struggled too much last year. Zach Bart says, I owe Gray Guard an apology. Don't, don't, didn't think he would land star given the schools that reached out solid land for us. Athletic guy can create his own shot. Yeah. Uh, Khalil Iverson comp, different body types and, and not as athletic. Like very few people were as athletic as Khalil Iverson, but much, much more skilled, much better shooter, uh, much longer. So I, I, he's a better, he's a much higher upside than Iverson. And I loved Iverson. Iverson was just a bigger dude, more physical, probably better athlete, more of a bull in a China shop, but did not have the skill or the shooting touch that store has. Let's keep going here. Uh, Ryan had a few 20 point games last year as well. Agreed. Jake R says fire guard question mark. <laughs> yeah. Listen again, I, I hope that this isn't it, right? Um, I'm, I'm thrilled with this pickup. I think it checks the boxes that this team needed the most, but you still need a backup five. Please go get a backup five. Please go get a backup five. Uh, Corey, 75% from the line, which is going to help us a ton. Yeah, and it's it's 75% with the ability to generate free throw shots, right? That's the, that's the, the biggest part of that. Um, a lot of players are good free throw shooters, but because of their size, because of their skill level, or because maybe they lack a physical inclination, they don't draw free throws. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, conversely, there's guys who are, are bad free throw shooters, but they're able to draw a lot of free throws. So it hurts you uh, more, more than it should. This is a guy who should, with his frame, his ability to get in the paint, should be able to draw free throws, and he can also shoot them. And that's a big thing Wisconsin has struggled with the last couple of years outside of Johnny Davis is they haven't had a guy that really draws a lot of free throws, that puts pressure on the team at the point of attack. Uh, this is somebody that is able to fill into those weak spots of the Wisconsin offensive ecosystem and kind of create his own ability there, his own shot, get to the line and make something happen when nothing else is really going on. Those long scoring droughts we've had, a lot of that is because we haven't had a guy who can just buckle down, create his own shot, force contact, get to the line. That's how you break shooting slumps sometimes. You just get to the line and hit free throws. This guy can do that, uh, potentially. We have to see still, young player, but he showed flashes that last year. Uh, Mason Sansala said, I've seen some movement shots from him. I think he's got that in the bag. Oh, I love that, Mason. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, I got to watch him more. Um, the standstill shooting's really good. He he actually talks about it. He had an interview he did with a, a, an outlet where he said, you know, my standstill shooting is basically elite. I almost never miss off the swing, and I like to go in and dunk on people. That was one of his quotes. But if he's got movement skills to him as well where he can shoot off the pick and roll as a 6'6 guy, that's the thing. If you can – be 6'6 six, six with a long wingspan and then shoot off of screens, shoot off of curls and pin downs. Oh, you become really tough. Luke Ver Holland says, I have no idea how we got him. Me neither. Don't care. No, I mean, no, let, I, I shouldn't say it. Great guard. We got him with great guard. Great guard sold the program. So obviously there's an NIL component to this. Wisconsin has been much better on the NIL front the last uh, year or so. Last couple months or so, I should say. But yeah, let's not short sale great guard here. He obviously sold him on this program shell comes back with higher guard yeah let's go uh who's going to the bench uh tyler streber says i think it's klesman we talked about that a little bit before uh mike says and noah reynolds too for Wyoming. i agree um let's keep going here luke verholland says saw some highlights most athletic guy in the program in decades Ooh. luke man thank you for jumping in luke's dropping bombs i i don't think he's the most athletic guy Excuse me, in decades. I, I think Khalil Iverson would be in that mix. And if you're saying decades, we're going back. Uh, Johnny Davis, we're going probably into Devin Harris. We're going into Sam Decker. 
I, but listen, I think he's in in that discussion. He's in those tiers of athleticism, and that's what Wisconsin is desperately needed. So, yeah, like as long as you're in that discussion, I'm down for it. Now we got I got to see him play a little more. I got to watch more film before I would be willing to say most athletic in decades. But I like the conversation and I like the discussion. All right, let's take a quick pause here. Come on back after some uh, some friends of our show, and then we're going to get back to this this really big news. Let's go. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. If you like this show, um, I appreciate it. It's incredibly humbling. Uh, and again, I think it's because this is just a Badger community where all of our voices are really equal. So I, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. And let's keep this thing going here. Shell says Johnny Davis vibes. Yeah, I think slightly different player. I don't know if defensively he's going to be able to be the guy Davis was, uh, but he's he's got a little more length. He, I think he's got a, a, he's definitely got a pure jump shot. I think Johnny Davis vibes in the sense that he could be a guy who could be an alpha that could take over. I don't think he's ready for that yet, but Johnny Davis wasn't ready for it as a freshman either. So I think he's got the Johnny Davis vibes in the sense that he could be an alpha scorer on a good team, but he's going to do it differently. Bo Dragon says, what are you guys smoking? Dude scored eight points a game on a terrible team. Again, man, like Bo, I love it, but I mean, top top 100 recruit, 6'6", six, six, athletic, elite shooting numbers, and he got better as the season went on. Uh, I don't know what you – if if this isn't good enough for you in the portal, and I'm not saying you, it has to be, right? Everybody can have their own thoughts. If this isn't good enough for you in the portal, then there's really nothing guard could do to sell you anymore, right? Like, And that's fine. If you are completely off the guard train and there's nothing he can do to redeem himself, okay. Like I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna not gonna tell you you're wrong or you can't think that. I disagree. I, I think this is a huge move. Um, and it's listen, not a lot of first, not a lot of freshmen come out and score 15, 20 points a game either. So I'm impressed by the film. I like the athletic tools. I think it's a good pickup. Mike says this team is gonna be awesome next year. We got the Gus Bus coming too. I don't know about awesome yet. Oh, I want again. I want to dive more on his film. I want to see what else they do. I still think there's a pretty big hole in the front court. I really, really get sketched out about having nobody backing up Stephen Crowell again. So I think that's a hole. I think this team, I would scratch out, this team is going to be awesome. I would say this team is going to be really good next year. And then if some more pieces come together and some internal development, some jumps happen, it could be awesome. That's where I'm at. Tyler Romaine said, did you see Storr's quote about why he chose Madison? Great job by guard. I did. Um, he felt the love. And again, that's where you have, if you're being honest, and you're trying to be fair, you have to give guard credit for this. And you can give guard credit for this and still not really believe in guard. That's fine. You know, like there were times uh, towards the end when I, there were things I still gave Paul Chris credit for, but I, the belief had kind of waned. So if you're not going to give great guard credit for this, then there's really nothing he can do outside of, he goes to like the elite eight next year to, to win back your fandom. And I don't even know if, for some people, that's going to do it. Like some people are just so far gone on great guard that I don't know what he could do. Corey says Klesman could be a very nice six man. Depth is getting better and better. Agreed, Corey. He's Klesman's a great six man. And I mean, again, let's just be honest. No team makes it through a season without injuries, right? We've lost Klesman. We've lost uh, Hepburn. We've lost Wall. We've lost Crowd. And it's just the last couple of years, and it, sometimes it's not for a lot of games, but. You know, when one of those dudes goes down, now you have a guy on the bench. It's it's all about like the, this this pecking order, right? So it's like a pitching staff. Once your ace goes down, your two becomes your ace, your three becomes your two, your four becomes your five, or your four becomes your three, and you have to find someone in AAA to bring up. Well, what's happened the last couple of years when somebody got hurt, we had nobody on the farm we could bring up to fill those spots. Now we're starting to build out some depth where if Hepburn gets hurt, God forbid. Noah Reynolds could step in for a few games and the wheels won't fall off, right? That's the whole point. It's not that you have a bench full of stars. It's can your stars withstand a couple in, or can your bench withstand a couple injuries without the wheels falling off? We're starting to get to the point with this Badgers team where that's true. Again, outside of that backup five spot, that's still a very real need. Ryan two three seven nine one says, "Who is a better player on this roster than Store? He was also just a freshman last year." Going back to my point that I I would pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah, it's a good question, man. I like I want to say a healthy, fully engaged Tyler Wall is better than Store, but I I'm tough. I, I'm I'm tough after seeing last year. I don't know if I can go there. I like Hepburn a lot. I, I really do. I think he's gonna flourish in an offense with with more weapons around him. Great defensive player. 
you know, Connor put up numbers sim better than store in a lot of ways as a freshman last year. So I don't know if any of those players are demonstrative, this demonstrative, well, I can't say that word are, are obviously better. I'm just going to go to a new word instead of continue to butcher it are obviously better than store, but I think during that conversation and I wouldn't put store above them just quite yet, but it's a good conversation. Um, let's keep going here. Shell says, Bo Dragon, let us have this day. <laughs> yes, just let us have this day, Bo. Uh, Bo says he's not negative. I'm being realistic. Brian Shetty says, huge get. Glad they landed him. I agree, Brian. And thank you for jumping in, Brian. Um, and everyone else that does, Brian, you've been on a lot of these shows. I really appreciate you, brother. Uh, it's a big get. Tyler Romaine scored 20 against UConn, 23 against Creighton. Uh, who, on, who on our roster do you think was scoring 20 against UConn last year? Again, this is just a big get from... Not, and not just a big get in terms of we needed more offensive firepower. We literally needed a tall, athletic guard who can create his own shots and hit shots. It, it, this is who he is. That's who AJ Store is. So I think he went out and he got the piece he absolutely needed. And now we got to see what happens. Mason Sinsala says, I need Chucky tossing the alley-oops to him on the fast break like I need air to breathe. Yeah, you're going to see... Again, let's, let's see how much they run next year. I actually wish they would run a little bit more. I think they got some pieces that are pretty good in transition. But we'll, we'll, we'll see what they do in transition. This is a, definitely a player that can get out in transition. He can, he can dunk on the break. There's some highlights of him doing that. So I, I hope they play a little more up-tempo. They can utilize some of their, their weapons that way. But we're going to have to see. Jake R. said, UConn also reached out to him when he went into the portal. Guy was highly coveted. Yeah. Listen, that, that's, that's, that's a great point, Jake. When you, when you think about, it's not just as a Badger fan looking at it through Wisconsin lenses and saying guard wanted him. He was a top 100 recruit. Look at the schools who wanted him, right? And then tell me that's not a coveted recruit. UConn reached out to him, right? Illinois, Texas, Xavier, um, Auburn, off, coming off the year they came off of. Like, just it, you don't need to, to really look too deeply or overanalyze this to say this is not, a, this is a huge win. This is a big time recruiting win for Wisconsin. Um, let's keep going. Carson Merton says, could he be our best player next year or two years? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Let me, let me read you this. This is from a scouting report. I found, I was, I was trying to dig up some information. This is from a scouting report. Um, an NBA scout scouted the Yukon, uh, St. John's game last year. And he had this to say about AJ store at six foot six and 200 pounds with plus length and a mature NBA frame already. Store is a fluid shooter connecting on 31% of his triples and an exciting slasher that can finish at the rim with power and explosion. Let me let me reread that sentence. Because when was the last time we had a, quote, exciting slasher that can finish at the rim with power and explosion? He continues, to, this, this scout continues to say, his physical tools and shooting point to at least an eventual 3 and D NBA role player with upside as an impactful two-way player. He's a leading candidate to break out as a sophomore. I mean, like, that's exactly what this team needs. A, a ceiling raiser, a potential NBA guy, a shooter, and a two-way player. And again, this the, this scout ended our left off by saying he's a leading candidate to break out as a sophomore. Be excited about this one, Badger fans. It may not work out. There's no guarantees ever in recruiting in the portal. Um, but th if you're not getting excited about this, then why are you paying attention to the portal? There's nothing that's really going to get you excited. Let's keep going here. Monty D, uh, good pickup. Definitely an upgrade. Monty, always great to see you, my friend. Um, Ryan said Bo woke up on the wrong, wrong side of the bed. That, that's every day for Bo with basketball. Carson Matsky said, can I change my vote for a role player that would have helped the team most last year? No, no. Although that I'm still um, putting that. So if you missed that, I put out a poll, a kind of a question. Which role player, former Badgers role player, would have helped last year's team the most? There's a prize attached to it. Um, I got to put all that together and still send out that prize. But Carson, too late for that one. Mike says, I love this signing. Still don't like Hepburn too much. I would give Hepburn a bit of a, a pass for last year. First of all, like he he he's kind of a pass for. Okay, so let me figure out the way I want to say this. He's a pass first guy on a team that was bereft of, of scores around him. And I think he was forced to take on too much of a role. Watch how he plays next year, right, with sophomore Connor, with A.J. Storr. I bet you you're going to see a, a much different version of Hepburn. And you're still always going to get that defense with Hepburn. You're going to get great spot-up shooting. Um, I'm excited to see what more weapons around Hepburn does to open up his game. Because basketball is very much a connected game, right? And if you have a point guard who, who really wants to uh, facilitate the offense, who wants to set people up, having a guy like Storr on the wing 
is, is going to help him immensely, in my opinion. So I'm very excited to see kind of how that plays out. Zach Dornick says, feels great to get a very athletic young guy. Uh, I think it'll be a great fit in our program. Kai Chin says, oh, no, Kai Chin says, let's see. Uh, it makes me want to go out and get some. I'm not sure what that's in reference to. I'm missing something there, Kai. Uh, I apologize. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, Christopher Gerber says, need another big or two. Yeah, listen, that's the thing. This this roster is not complete. This is not a Final Four roster, uh, but it's a much better roster. It's You don't go from the NIT to the Final Four in one jump, right? It's a series of moves, and some of those moves are internal, right? I think that's important to understand. It's, it's internal development from players. It's adding pieces. They've made a couple moves already that are going to elevate this team, but you still need, as Christopher said, you still need a big – you absolutely need a big um, keep going here. A couple more comments. And I got a lot of them here. I'm not going to get to all of them. I apologize. Oh, so many comments. Uh, you guys are awesome. I'm not going to get to them all, but uh, we're at 30 minutes. I'm going to wrap it there again. We're going to do, let me get comment on, on here. Uh, I do agree with Bo about uh, the athletic point guard and that can create shots for others. Yeah. We could use a more athletic point guard to create shots um, with other people, but was Jordan Taylor that athletic? I mean, Jordan Taylor was, what, a first-team All-American? Jordan Taylor wasn't that athletic. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of point guards that thrive with the ability to um, create angles, use their body physically, understand the game. So I, I'm interested – I'm really interested to see how Hepburn plays next year with a better offense around him. I I, I would be – I would wait on the Hepburn hate for those that are there. Um, all right, let's 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 wrap it up there. Ton of comments I didn't get to. I'll, I'll wrap those comments up, and I like to do live kind of comment shows too. So I'll, I'll wrap those up again. If you put comments in the show, I always want to try to get to them. Um, I think I owe that to y'all. Anyway, on Wisconsin, I'm excited about this one. If you're not, that's cool. Like I, I'll never tell somebody how to fan or what to think, but I think this is a huge get. I think it checks a ton of boxes. We're gonna talk about it a lot more because we got to dive into his game and got to see kind of how it fits with all the pieces guard has, and hopefully he's not done. But on Wisconsin, we'll talk tomorrow. John Garcia on the show talking about the recent linebacker commits. Uh, you're not going to want to miss that one. Plus, we talk about J.D. on Matthews, the just electric running back out of Scottsdale, Arizona. We're going to talk about that tomorrow on Lockdown Badgers. But thank you so much for tuning in to this one. And uh, let's let's talk tomorrow. Let's go.